Welcome to Chicory's maintenance series. This time we're working on the windlass. You've seen me pull out the windlass before and do a service on the top half and, and change the uh, gear lube inside. But this time I'm actually gonna take the gear uh, housing apart, replace seals and inspect everything and see uh, what needs to be done. I'm concerned about some moisture uh, making its way through the top seal and that's why I'm doing this. So I'll take you along for the ride. So I um, drained the liquid, uh, the, the gear lube out of it. I didn't see any moisture, um, though I did, you know, it has a clear um, lens to check fluid and I saw some condensation in there and some goo. So that's why part of the reason I'm doing this. Uh, so I'm going to continue disassembling, remove uh, two snap rings on the ends here and then I'll pull out the shaft and then I'll start taking the gear case apart. Back in a second. So I apologize, but uh, there was a gas powered power washer going uh, while I was disassembling this and it was way too loud. Um, so I didn't capture any of that. I'll show you the uh, putting back together and I'll tell you what is involved with uh, taking it apart. So obviously these are the two halves of the gear case. And on this side is where this worm gear um, attaches. So you, you pull this off first and then inside there is this uh, gear and the worm gear. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I was paying attention to what I was doing. So uh, inside here fits this. I don't want to put that in there because uh, I want to pre-lube it. And then this goes against the worm. There's a bearing on each side and there is two uh, snap ring retainers uh, and then there's a seal. And then there's a seal here and there's a seal here. Um, and besides that, um, that's really all there is to assemble this. And, and I'll show you as I go. Um, but right now I've just cleaned everything up with brake, brake fluid. And I'm in preparation of cleaning uh, this gasket surface here. So I'm gonna do that next. And then I'm going to start uh, the assembly process. Okay, so when you saw me last, uh, it was yesterday and it was at the very end of the day and I was trying to assemble the worm gear and I was trying to drive in a bearing and it was it just sort of didn't feel right compared to all the other ones um, Maxwell 3500s I've rebuilt so I stopped um, and so I'll show you where I am now so the the worm gear uh, assembly is together and everything works just perfectly um, what I needed to do was uh, where this bearing is in here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so it might be a little easier. It's hard to see. But um, the outside housing where it engages the bearing, um, it was just too tight. And so I took a Dremel with a little sanding wheel on it and I just took a couple thousands off the inside. And then it slid in exactly the way it should. And then... Um, then I drove, uh, let me see if I can turn a light on. No, I guess I can't. Let me see if I can get a better light. There you go. You can see the bearing and two snap rings. So those go went on very easily. So like I said, everything is here. So this mounts with four uh, screws and then the housing uh, mounts together with these screws. And so whenever I do a project like this, I chase all of the threads uh, internally with um, taps and then I run a die over all the screws because as I clamp this down I don't want to be fighting you can probably see inside here there's crud so I'm going to chase all that crud out and then I will use uh, a little bit more brake clean and clean everything perfectly so that when it's ready to go together uh, and then the, I'll have to uh, put uh, seals in here which I'll show you um, I got some um, RTV because you can see that these 3500s, well, uh, assume all of them that are made like this, um, start to pit a little bit. And I'm concerned about um, not the inside of the seal, but the outside of the seal 
uh, possibly leaking. So I'm going to put a little layer of RTV on here before I drive the seal in to make sure that that's uh, sealed because this is the top side and rainwater can get here and sit on top. So um, I'm going to chase all of these threads um, and, and the nuts and bolts and everything and then uh, I'll get ready to assemble. Be back in a minute. So, just showing you an example here of why I chase all of the threads. Um, I'm going to zoom in on this. So, I just did this first one and look at everything that came out of uh, the threads and look at how uh, packed the tap is. So, um, it's obviously a great idea to do this to make sure that when you're threading everything together that you're not hitting in that crud and you're getting a false sense of how much torque you're putting on the bolt or machine screw for that matter uh, okay I'll be back okay so I'm starting to uh, ready to assemble I have um, run a tap through everything uh, cleaned up all of the hardware everything's ready to go I installed uh, the seal here I installed the seal here with uh, RTV like I said because of that pitting and then over here, I installed the seal at this end. Um, and now it is time to start the assembly process. So I'm going to connect this first and then uh, put these gears in and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so I've attached the bolt door section to the uh, case. Uh, and part of that, of course, is just putting in these four bolts. There's an O-ring that seals it, and then there's an end cap that you put on that has an O-ring seal as well. So now we're going to flip it over, and you can see, um, if I turn the ring gear, you can see that gear turning. It's obviously a big reduction. Um, and so I'm going to start assembling all the gears here so that we can put the top of the case on. So. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. Um, all the gears are in. Um, and let's see if I turn the worm gear. There's a little bit of movement there. And so everything's the way it should be. Now I'm going to seal um, the case. I'm going to actually zoom out for you. I'm going to seal the uh, case together. Now, <clears throat> this is one of those things where you do as I say, not as I do. The manufacturer recommends that you use an anaerobic um, Loctite uh, gasket maker for this. These cases seem to leak, and so I'm going to try um, this, which is um, comparable to Hylamar Blue. Um, and this material stays supple and it will seal this. Uh, this is made for jet engines and stuff. So um, there's obviously just the weight of the uh, fluid in here that um, is what is put, applying pressure on this gasket surface. So it, it's, it doesn't have to be super strong, but the anaerobic stuff is so hard and brittle that any kind of vibration, I think, uh, cracks it. And so having something more flexible, I'm going to try it. I'll get back to you, uh, but I believe that this is going to work really well. So I'm going to put that on, and I'll be back. So I'm back. Uh, you can see the gasket materials on there, and you apply it and wait for the uh, solvent to evaporate. And you can see it kind of has a dull finish now. And basically, this stuff... It's almost impossible. I mean, you gotta use like a razor blade and it's still hard to get it off the metal. It's amazing how it bonds. And then these two surfaces are like contact cement. Once you put them together, um, you can move, but those two things stick to each other and it's, it's amazing stuff. If you're interested, just do a search on um, YouTube for High Lamar Blue um, and uh, they do a discussion about how it was made, and it's it's really amazing stuff. Um, I'd recommend uh, trying it out only on metal-to-metal uh, -metal surfaces. You can use it as a gasket dressing too, but uh, I found that if you put it on something with rubber, it'll actually squeeze out, so don't do that. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so the uh, 
gear cases together. It's been torqued down and the instructions for the uh, Permatex gasket dressing, which once again is the equivalent to Halimar, Halimar Blue, uh, is you torque it down uh, and then 10 minutes later you retorque just one more time uh, because the, the there's a little bit of squeeze out and um, just make sure that that um, doesn't loosen anything so you retorque again. So when I get back then we'll start filling um, gear oil uh, into the case. So um, we're almost done. Okay, we're back. Everything's put together. So now I'm going to start adding uh, the gear loop. I'll be back. Okay, uh, so fluid is where it should be. Um, it's the reason that's a little low is just because I have to hold it up a little bit. Um, but obviously I've got the shaft in now and uh, now I'm going to put the collar on that mounts and then it can actually be put in the boat. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, she's ready to go in the boat. So that's the next step. So here is the uh, windlass back in. Uh, if you want to see how it is to install and remove the actual windlass, there's another video uh, on servicing your windlass and it shows uh, how to uh, assemble and disassemble the top half where um, all of the chain wheel and um, warping drum are. But um, this video was just focusing on, of course, the gear case. So it's in and we've tested it. We pulled the chain in, everything's great. So uh, on to the next project. Uh, thanks for joining me. And thanks always for subscribing, commenting, liking, and of course, viewing. Uh, until next time, thanks, bye.